Hey, what's up guys? My name is Moda and welcome back to the Mining Snacker YouTube channel. Today's video, we're going to do some kind of theoreticals with the potential of this Ice River unit, potentially what size units they can be, potentially what price points they can be, potential profitability, right? So we're going to kind of run a little bit more on the best case scenarios just to kind of see at what price point does it need to be for there to be actual value here. Okay, so we're going to kind of take into account different things the hash rate increase and potentially just the competition, right? Because we did get a little hint from Gold Shell as to what they're going to potentially price next week. So now we have something on the low end and something on the high end. That way we can really make a comparison here, right? So if that sounds good, guys, stay tuned. Let's get to this thing. So this is going to be super rough theoreticals. We're going to go just based off of a couple of values that are, in my opinion, more on the best case scenario just to kind of see where the value is, right? Because if we're running more ideal, like best case scenarios, and it's still not really making sense at those prices, we know that at least for me, it has to be a better value, okay? So there's a lot of variables at play here though. I'm gonna do a little bit more on the worst case. Hopefully, maybe not that many units get released and it works out better for you, right? But for me, risk versus reward. Right, so I'm gonna be a little bit more realistic. So we'll talk about the hash rate numbers and such we'll use for this. But again, just purely theoreticals here, just in case it does go on sale tomorrow, we have something to kind of like ballpark, right? So let's start with the AL1, right? Which is realistically, it's gonna be the standard, right? In terms of efficiency, it's going to be the standard. And now we also have a price point that is a standard also, okay? So in terms of efficiency, we saw that it's a twice, it's a 2x efficiency in gain over the gold shell unit. It's twice as efficient as the gold shell, okay? So that's gonna be one factor. For me personally, I'm viewing this similar to Caspa, where if you're gonna degen and try to get in early, it's for the purpose of trying to stack as many coins prior to the hash rate running, okay? So what I'm gonna value the most here is actually not so much efficiency, but the price to Terra hash ratio. Okay, so for me, that's, again, I'm just going through theoreticals of what I'm going to value, what I'm going to look for if I decide to buy one of these tomorrow if they go for sale. So right off the rip, efficiency is going to be important long term. But for me, if I'm going to degen into something early, it's extreme short term. It's something that's like a two to three month play where that's good, where you're going to make most of your rewards. Okay, so I'm going to value price to Terra hash the most. Okay, so on the high end, we have the Bitmain unit. Coming in, again, we're going to do rough math. Realistically, it's 1876 a terahash. We're going to just easy round numbers, $2,000 a terahash. Okay. We have one variable on the high end. We also now, because a lot of the vendors are now replicating similar price points here. It does seem like this may be the price reduction that they're going to do that they kind of hinted yesterday on Twitter that they may be doing. Okay. So it looks like this guy's going to get repriced to $3,000. This is not finalized. This is not official from Gold Shell. It is going to probably be dynamic because if the Ice River prices are more aggressive, then expect this to change. But right now, it does seem like this is what they are planning. Okay. So if we break it down and we run the numbers and we calculate it, this guy is going to come in. So let's do rough math. This way you can kind of evaluate tomorrow. Okay. So at this point, we know the Bitmain unit, 2000 a terahash. This guy, we're going to, again, we're going to ballpark it, 3,000. And we're going to divide that by the 0.72, okay? We're going to get, again, we are looking for price to terahash, okay? In this case, it's 720 gigahash, which is the equivalent of 0.72 terahash, okay? So once we do that, it gives us a price. It's 4166 a terahash, right? Again, easy numbers. We're going to just call it 4,000 a terahash. In this case, it's twice as much to terahash after this price reduction so at three thousand dollars for the al box two it's four thousand dollars still a terahash when the bitmain unit which is twice as efficient is two thousand dollars a terahash so just basing it off of that because there is always going to be a premium for the smaller units okay so make sure you understand that also it should not be twice as much though okay so now we have something again on the high end, something on the low end. Okay, so $2,000 from Bitmain, $4,000 from Gold Show. 
we're gonna base our number off of something in the middle. Okay, in this case, they're making it super easy. Let's say that Ice River comes in at about $3,000 a terahash, okay? Now we know when we run these numbers, if they have to beat that amount, okay? Or right off the rip, if they just decide to beat Bitmain right off the bat, which they can, okay? But we're gonna kind of play it in the middle to kind of see where those numbers would lie. The other big variable we're gonna run is when we look at profitability, we're gonna be a little bit more conservative on the hash rate increase. Okay, the last one we did was more of a worst case or kind of realistic case. In this case, again, we're gonna run better case scenarios to see what it's looking like. So in this case, we're gonna do a potential 10X increase in the hash rate. So instead of it being 2000 units or the equivalent hash rate of 2000 AL1s, we're gonna do 1000, okay? So the play here would be that maybe it's only 500 AL1s and then the equivalent of 500 AL1s in terms of hash rate with the other units, with the Gold Shell and these Ice River units. Because again, it's gonna be Ice River series, not just the AL0, but it looks like it'll be small and potentially mid to high end units, okay? So we're gonna do like half of what we did yesterday. So when we did the numbers the other day, 2,000 of the AL1s was gonna be what? A 20X increase, okay? In this case, we're gonna cut that in half we're going to say the equivalent of a thousand, so we're going to have that. So it'll be a 10x increase. So you're going to get a tenth. Okay. Again, easy math purposes. We're just going to play with these numbers. So now that we have those variables in play, now we can kind of play along with the numbers. So we're going to throw three theoreticals in here that they're going to have a similar play like what they did with the initial cast units, which was what? A K is zero which to me is gonna be extremely likely they're gonna release something on the low end because this is gonna be a money maker for them because it's gonna be the cheapest unit, okay? People are gonna be more prone to potentially paying X amount for this guy versus 30 grand for the big guy, okay? Especially when they see the profit calculator numbers. Unfortunately, a lot of people are gonna fall for that and they're gonna do that, okay? So we're gonna factor in, we're gonna look at all those things. The one thing that's always been constant with the KS zeros is what? The 100 watts. Okay, so we're gonna kind of throw theoreticals as to what the specs could be based off of 100 watts, and we're gonna spec it again, because we're doing like a best case scenario, that the efficiency is closer to the Bitmain unit than the Gold Shell unit, right? Realistically, I wouldn't be surprised either way. I wouldn't be surprised if it's lower tier and it's closer to the Gold Shell unit, or if it's a higher tier and it's actually relatively close to the Bitmain unit, okay? So again, we're playing with the best case scenario type things, okay? So in this case, again, we're gonna do easy rough math, okay? So easiest way to do it, again, napkin math, easy to do it in the head. We're gonna divide these initial numbers by 10, okay? Bringing us to what? If it's 15.6 terahash, it would go down to 1.5 terahash at 350 watts. At that point, we can cut that to a third, right? Again, easy math purposes, which will bring us to what? 500 giga hash at about 100 watts or so. Okay, again, it's not exact, really, it's gonna be a little bit higher, a lot of variables, and this is just basing off of a similar efficiency to the Bitmain unit. Again, we're just playing with the numbers here. At that point, if we were to punch it into a calculator, okay, again, 500 giga hash, at about 100 watts, and we're gonna guesstimate, again, that we're gonna come in closer to the $3,000 a terahash price point. Okay, will it, won't it, we don't know, but this is gonna give us something to compare to. So if it does come in at that price point, that would bring us to this guy coming in at roughly about $1,500, okay? So basing it off of that price point, when we look at the calculator, fiat value is gonna be about 33 bucks. Factor in the what? The increase in hash rate, again, if it's the equivalent of 1,000 AL1s in total, right, between the three manufacturers, it's a tenth of this meaning it's not gonna be 33 bucks, potentially $3.30 at ALF's current price. This is factoring in that ALF just 2 x in a day, okay? Factor that in also. Realistically, what you wanna focus on here is the yield, okay? So you're gonna go from 16.7 ALF down to 1.6 ALF, okay? So again, this is basing it off of a premium on the Bitmain unit. So instead of being 2,000 a terahash, being 3,000 terahash, and that the efficiency is closer to the Bitmain unit than the Gold Shell unit, okay? So looking at this price point for 1,500 bucks, is this worth the DGEN play? 
maybe, right? Factor in that ALF has a lot of upside potential. You're going to be able to stack the DGEN play here, the risk here, or what you're betting on is that the batch is going to be small. You're betting on that instead of the equivalent of 1,000 AL1s, maybe it's the equivalent in total hash rate of only 500, maybe 250. That's the DGEN play. And that potentially, in a rapid amount of time, you can stack a good amount of ALF. Is it going to be insanely popular where right off the rip in two months you're going to make $2,000? Probably not. What you're kind of betting on is that you may get a decent amount of yield initially. You want to try to get as much as you can and that this guy is likely to, especially if it's efficient, continue to stack for quite a while and you're baking on price appreciation with Alephium. Again, it does have a lot of potential because it is a relatively small market cap and it is getting a ton of hype from the ASIC manufacturers, which are what? Likely to pump this damn price. Okay, so that's kind of the play here. So this is on the low end. Okay. Now, let's say that they are going to do the playbook of releasing an AL1 and an AL2, which, depending on your thought process, may or may not happen, right? The reason I'm saying it may not happen is because what? They stopped making these quite a while ago, okay? So maybe they're just going to focus on the super low end and the super high end. Or you could throw that tinfoil hat on and speculate that maybe the reason they never released any other CAS AL or KS1s or KS2s is because they've been saving them for potential AL1s and AL2s and they're gonna come back in that form. Okay, that's another possibility. Who knows though? Again, we're just throwing three radicals out here and we're just trying to see what happens if that were to be the case, okay? So let's say they do throw an AL1 at us, okay? So then at that case, basing it off of the same metrics, what do we know about that guy? That guy was a 600 water, okay? So then at that point, we're gonna 6X these stats. So we're gonna do 3,000 giga hash, which is what? Three tera hash at 600 watts. What we also know is that typically there's a small discount for the larger units. Okay, so let's say they do decide to do that. Let's say instead of it being 3K a tera hash, let's say it goes down to $2,700 a tera hash. Okay, that's gonna bring us roughly to about 81, and we're gonna just ballpark it to like $8,000. Okay, so that's it. Having a discount going down to $2,700 a tera hash. So again, 3,000 giga hash, which is three tera hash at 600 watts, and let's say it's 8K. Then at this point, this gets slightly better. This is still not looking too great for 8,000 bucks, okay? So you'd go, we're dividing this by 10, so instead of being 200 bucks, potentially 20 bucks, and about 10 out, okay? For 8,000 bucks. This is where it gets a little dicey. Okay, you kind of have to really see. Where it gets super dice here is this guy. So now let's say theoretically, same thought process. A 1200 water. So now what? We're doubling the AL1 potentially. So going up to 6 tera hash. 6 tera hash, 1200 watts. And let's say again, you get another slight discount for this guy. So let's say we're coming in at 2600 a tera hash. Okay, bring you to a price of 15,600 bucks. Then at this point, these specs look better, but in my opinion, not for the $15,000. Okay, so then at this point, same thing. If we're to divide this by 10, instead of being 400 bucks, it'd be about 40 bucks. Instead of being 200 off, it'd be about 20 off. Okay. So again, you're gonna have to see if that DGEN play works. Cause again, we're valuing this based off of the hash rate increasing 10X. Maybe, it's less than that, that's kind of what your best case scenario is. Okay, so now we know that if the AL0 were to come in at that price point at around $3,000 a tera hash, in my opinion, it needs to be cheaper. It really, really does, okay? Um, we're gonna see what they end up doing. Maybe they do go aggressive and they do undercut Bitmain or maybe they just match it. Even realistically, even if they were to match it, the ice rivers are going to be massively more appealing because you're going to be able to get a small fraction of that even if the efficiency isn't there i really don't expect it or really think the efficiency is going to be on par with the bitmain unit realistically i think it's going to be either at the gold shell level or maybe something in between okay but again we're playing the numbers as it as if though it is going to be really efficient realistically i think this is gonna i don't think it's going to be this efficient okay 
So again, even playing with the numbers and making it more best case in my opinion, to me, the math ain't mathin' at these price points, okay? So for me at least, it needs to be cheaper than 3,000 a terahash. Realistically, hopefully, maybe they undercut them. Maybe it is lower than the 2,000, which kind of would make sense, especially if it's not as efficient, especially if the efficiency is on the gold shell side where it's half the efficiency. Okay, so that's kind of where I could potentially see value, and then at that point, we'll rerun the numbers. But I know right off the rip that if it's 3,000 a terahash, it's a definite no-go for me, at least. Again, this is going to be totally up to you and where you see the value. A lot of variables at play here to really say yay or nay. Okay, but I'm just valuing it where I need it to be at if I'm going to degen here, right? If we were at a point where the market was really frothy and I'm taking some profits anyway... I'd be more down for degening, but the fact that a lot of these altcoin prices are at pretty close to the low still, even with this little pump today, some are more appealing to just buy coins at these low prices. Okay, so definitely have to look at things, but like this is kind of where I'm trying to look at value. Okay, so these predictions could be wildly off. They may not make any of these anywhere near here, but I know that it has to beat these specs for me to even remotely consider even looking at it closely again. Okay, because again, they may go on sale tomorrow. They may announce them and they may go on sale at the same moment. And what's going to happen? You're going to have that small window to decide whether you think it's going to be worth it or not. Okay, but for me, ideally, I'm looking for it to come in cheaper than the Bitmain unit. Because to me, already the Bitmain unit is extremely dicey. Okay, because again, we just don't know how many units. If we can somehow get a ballpark, like, oh yeah, it's only going to be 250 units max then that changes things. But again, I would plan for more of a worst case scenario. Okay, because again, even in my opinion, this is closer to a best case scenario. And even at this point, it's not looking too hot at these price levels. Okay. So it's going to be super exciting. We don't even know if we're going to get price points. This is another thing to factor in. Maybe they just give us the specs, but at least that also gives us an idea. But hopefully we do get the whole array. Hopefully we do get the specs. We get prices. And we get shipping windows. This is going to be another thing that is going to be a factor because if this thing's not going to ship until pretty far down the road, that is also going to change things. This is kind of assuming that they come out either at the same time as the Bitmain unit or earlier. Okay, because this is another thing to factor in is if it does come out sooner, that's something that definitely does change things. Because if you have a month heads up on top of the Bitmain unit, that can definitely change things. Like if they were to announce it Monday and the thing starts shipping the following week, there can be a chance that at that point we'll definitely calculate and see what's up. Okay, and even when they do give us the specs, I really do want to see. I am going to play with the numbers anyway. But a lot of variables at play here. And then even then, even if we do get the specs and it looks good, who's to say that Gold Shell doesn't adjust further? Okay, because understand that these are ready to go now. The AL box and the AL box 2s. So even though the efficiency isn't there, again, who's to say that they don't reduce the price point to match the ice rivers? We don't know, right? But these are all factors that I'm going to be looking at actively, especially this guy, only because this guy is going to be available now. This thing is going to be shipping very soon. Okay, so that is definitely still in play. Not at these price points, but again, if it does beat those other levels, then it can make sense, right? Like realistically, this guy needs to be the price of the AL1 at the, the reprice. It needs to be like 1500 bucks for it to make sense, realistically. But if it does go down to under 2K, 1500 bucks, and it's shipping now, uh, I would definitely run some numbers, okay? Because then at that point, it's potential that you may make a chunk of your money back before then, okay? So and it depends on what you're valuing more here. Are you valuing the profitability or the yield, okay? Because understand also that we're basing these numbers off of this current pump that just 2x it's very possible that we retrace down to a dollar 80 dollar 70 dollar 50 dollar 20 that would not be surprising at all whatsoever okay so a lot of variables here that's why it's really hard to like do accurate calculations realistically what we can do is like worst case scenario things and like best case scenario things and that we can kind of get something in between that way we can see where the value needs to lie at. and that's kind of just my thought process this is literally just i'm literally sharing the napkin math i'm doing to see what happens tomorrow right so let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments do you guys think that they are going to undercut bitmain 
because to me, uh, it's almost a guarantee that they're going to be better than Gold Shell, right? So I think it's they need to be better than that four thousand dollars of Terra Hash range. The real question is, are they going to kind of play it by ear, try to ride the profitability wave, and try to get a a little more dough and price it at that three thousand, or are they going to match Bitmain, or are they going to be leaders in this price war and just undercut them right off the rip? That again is going to change things pretty drastically. Okay, so it's going to be exciting stuff. Again, I love seeing this stuff. Even all of last year covering all the price battles, all the price drops. It's super fascinating, right? Even if I'm not interested in purchasing, it's still just fascinating to watch this thing play out. Like it's <laughs> it's literally a game of 4D chess. And it's kind of fun, like predicting what's going to happen. Who's going to make the first move? Who's going to do the first pr price cut? Are people actually buying them at these prices? Which... I know it seems crazy to think, but yes, a ton of people will be buying that AL1 day one, okay? And it may not be the worst play. Again, we'll have a better idea tomorrow because, again, the play there is that you're going to have the efficiency king, which what? If you have the biggest unit and it's the most efficient unit, it's most likely to last you the longest. It's most likely to be profitable for the longest period of time. Because, yes, these numbers may look kind of crappy right now, but who's to say six months from now, come January 2025, that lithium's not at five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bucks. Okay, so ton of factors at play here, ton of variables to think about. But just again, think about these things. Think about different aspects to look at: the hash rates, potential prices, efficiency numbers. Factor in all these things, right? Again, we've had the playbook with Caspa. We're gonna take the lessons we learned there, apply them here, because it's not one to one. There are a lot of differences, like we mentioned in the other video. But there's a lot of lessons here, okay? So again, guys, let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments, though. Let me know what, what price points. Do you guys think they are going to do an AL1, AL2? Do you guys think a similar thing where they save those shells specifically for this unit? Let me know what you guys are thinking, guys. Please comment, like, and subscribe, guys. I thank you for watching. I really, really do. And I am out.